Now that we set up a method to generate tokens, let's start using them within our application. So the first thing we wanted to do is tell our application that we want to have the ability to authenticate JALT tokens. So we'll need to configure that within the startup class and we'll start in that first. We're building on top of the last several videos. If you missed any of them, you'll see a playlist jump out on the right side here. If you click on that, that'd be the entire playlist for this series. Let's open up our startup class. So inside the API, open up the startup class. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna tell our application that we want the ability to authenticate JALT tokens. So inside the configure services, towards the end here, we'll add on to our services and we'll add authentication. And the type of authentication we wanna do is for JALT bearer tokens. So I'll add in for JALT bearer. And here you can pass in a list of options. And I'll add that here. And make sure I close it up correctly. And then in here, I'll just paste the snippet I already have. And this is very similar to what we did inside, inside of our JALT token generator service. We set up our key and we all need to set that up here as well. So I'll bring that in, bring it in from Microsoft Identity Model Token. And this is very important that you spell this correctly. So we're getting our key from our configuration file. And then we'll also bring this in and we'll bring that in from system text. So if you watched the last video, we did something very similar like this in the last video. Also, in this case, we're going to be validating the issuer, and we set that up in the last video as well. And we're going to be validating the issuer and validating our key, so we set both of them to true. The audience, we're not going to validate, so I set that to false. We didn't set that. Now, there's one more thing we want to do. We want to set up our schema, and to do that, we can add that here. So let's call it CFG for short, and this would be our configurations. And I'll add in another snippet. So this is gonna set up our default authentication schema. And we wanna bring in JALT bearer defaults. And we'll bring that in from Microsoft ASP.NET Core Authentication JALT bearer. So now we just set up our schemas. Now there's one more thing we wanna check on this file. And we did this in video one. And you wanna make sure you add or use authentication right here. So you wanna make sure you set this up within your configure method. And now we just set up our startup class. So you wanna make sure that your service looks like this right here. Let's open up the controllers now. So we wanna open up the value controller. We'll check something in there. And also our identity controller as well. And we'll start inside of the identity controller. And we only need to make two changes in here for now. The first thing we wanna do is bring in the service we set up in the last video. And I'll add that on towards the end right here. And then bring in the JALT token generator and bring that in from the core services token. Also we'll set up a private variable. Initialize field from parameter. And now we have this JALT token we could call on that to create our token. And then inside of the login method now, we have this placeholder right here. And now we're ready to call on our service. So JALT token, and then we'll call generate token. And for now, we need to pass in the user. And that's gonna be the user from DB. Later on, we're gonna be coming back and changing this when we're passing in roles and claims. And that's what you want your identity controller to look like. So you wanna set this up, and then make sure you bring in your JALT token service into the constructor. Now we're ready to double check something inside the value controller. We'll open that up. And now you wanna make sure you add in this authorized attribute to any API that you wanna protect. So in this case, we're just using this file, this value controllers file for testing, and we're protecting this API. And again, we set this up in video one as well. We added this authorized attribute. So any API you wanna protect, make sure you go in and add that in. And now we're ready for testing. So let's make sure we restart the application since we made some changes to the startup class. So I'll shut it down and restart it. Now let's test it in Postman. So now when we log in, we should be able to get a token and then we should also get access to our protected API. So let's try logging in. So I'm calling on the identity login API and then I have a valid username and password. Hit send. 
and here is our token so this token should now allow us into our protected api so you want to copy this make sure you get every letter in there very important and let's go into our protected api so i'll open that up and in this case it's the localhost 5000 value and this was protected and we couldn't get access to it so i'll go hit send and we're getting a 401 unauthorized now inside of the header we'll pass in a token and i already did this before now i messed this up before and i misspelled something when i was setting up my configurations and i ran into all kinds of headaches so you definitely want to make sure that if you're getting any problems here you go back and double check this part right here because this is the mistake i made i spelled this wrong right here within my my service and i had all kinds of issues so just make sure that you're spelling these correctly it's easy to make a mistake here but if we go back to here and i'll paste in my valid token and then if we hit send we're able to get our values now now this part it's very easy to make a mistake like let's say for example if you didn't copy and paste the token correctly that that will give you a problem here if you didn't add a space like if we go back here right after the bearer i made this mistake before so you want to make sure you add a space between the bearer and your token if you don't do that you'll get an error and like i said before if you misspell anything with your your configuration that will give you a bunch of headaches as well so if you're trying this and you're getting an error or you're getting unauthorized just go back and double check all your steps and don't get frustrated it's very easy to make a mistake here because i do it all the time but if you're at this point and you're getting some values then we're ready to move on to video nine so in the next video video nine what we'll do is we'll work in our angular application and we'll make an api call we'll pass in the token that we just created and we'll get access to our values our protected api using that token and we'll do that next